What's going on, guys? I'm just going to discuss this short book by Francis Bacon called The New Atlantis. Uh, unfortunately, it's a book which was um, incomplete. Uh, it was It's an unfinished book. It's an unfinished novel. Um, Francis Bacon was unable to complete it before his death. Uh, and as such, the book is only about 50, 60 pages long. You know, I, I hesitate to even calling it a book. So, you know, the novel itself um, uh, is quite short because of this. Uh, we have to make do what we have yeah so there, there's still content there there's still something to talk about there's still definitely something which which which, which brings a lot of interest uh, so the new atlantis was um, written in the 1600s in the 1630s i believe it was um, and the way that i the, the, the way in which i approach this book and the way in which i access this book is or this novel is through another book called uh, the three early modern utopias so I have this book to my side, as you can see here, um, and it's part of the Oxford World Classics editions. Um, now, for those who aren't familiar with the Oxford World Classics, um, this is a great, they're they a great edition of books, which uh, do, do a very, very excellent job of bringing together uh, writings from the same author or writings from different authors on similar subjects, right? They do a great job of amalgamating things and, and putting into a, into, into a specific book um, writings from different time periods, from different historical periods, um, and, 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 and unifying uh, the cer certain themes um, throughout history. Uh, they do a great job of, of, of presenting the most pertinent or the essential works of an author. So the Oxford World Classics are definitely books which I, I seem to keep an eye out for and which I've, which I've continually bought throughout the years. Uh, this particular one brings together Thomas More's uh, Utopia, um, which is the most popular utopian book, I think, of, of the time, um, given the fact that he is credited for coining the term utopia. Um, you also have uh, Henry Neville's book, The Isle of Pines, uh, or novel, and then you also have, and then finally you have, uh, of course, Francis Bacon's The New Atlantis, which, which completes this sort of trio of, of early modern utopias. Um, they're all published around the periods uh, of 1600s, 1500s, hence the early modern um, uh, um, sort of a description. Um, so utopia, um, this is an idea which was uh, first credited to Plato. Um, I, I believe that Plato was the first one who, who was said to have written about utopia in his Republic. Um, however, I really, I believe at least that the, the, the concept, the idea, the conception of a utopia predates Plato. You know, it goes all the way back to, I'd, I'd even be, be a sort of, uh, uh, confident enough to say that it goes back to the birth of mankind simply because I believe it is a innate inherent function of our imaginative, imaginative capacities yeah it's something which we all uh, have within us you know this ability to to conceptualize and theorize and imagine and dream about the perfect states the ideal states uh, and 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 given this more weight um, uh, all of us are part of a society, a part of a group, part of a culture, and 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 inherently, uh, our, all our societies, all our cultures have their deficiencies, have their low points, and have their inadequacies. And because of this, I think where uh, it is natural for us to to, uh, to dream about a perfect society. Well, what is the alternative to the place we're in currently? What, what how can we make things better? What is this sort of heavenly uh, equivalent uh, to, to society uh, what can we where, where, where is this place you know is, is there a place which everything in which every, every, everything is perfect in which everything is controlled and peaceful and loving and, and, and caring and, and beautiful is there a place in the world where there's stability and peace is there a, is, is there a utopia and uh, I think all of us as human beings as these self-reflective self-conscious entities these the, even even call us sort of creatures these sentient creatures us as people as humans um who have this imaginative strong capacity for for dreaming and thinking i think all of us have thought about a utopia at one point in our lives and this is the reason why i say that the, 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 the i think the actual idea the inherent idea of a utopia predates plato you know some would potentially even say that it's a sort of an archetype of sorts because it's it's it goes hand in hand with our self-consciousness you know when you have self-consciousness emerging sentience emerging i think you also have something such as a utopia also emerging alongside with it because it's it's something which is a, which is based on contrast it's based on our current society you know when you have the existence of a society and of course you then have the existence of a potentially perfect society in in, in theory in in dream so this is what a utopia is said to be in our, in our, at, least, at least thought of as being in our current present day uh, reading a little bit about the history of utopia i was surprised to find that the original word the original meaning for utopia in greek 
is the non-existent place, okay? A place which does not exist, okay? Um, and then later on, uh, the, the, the word utopia ha was, has, has, has come to be referred to as a place known as the good place, okay? Um, and the distinction between the, the non-existent place and, and the good place um, is in the actual way in which the words are written. So the non-existent place is written in the classical utopia, um, and then the good place uh, in Greek was written in with the with with the e before the u, so a utopia. But however, in English, the pronunciation is identical. The way you sound out the words is identical. So the utopia, the non-existent place, and the good place are sounded out and are pronounced in exactly the same ways. Hence the confusion. However. Going back to the non-existent place, you can kind of see how the good place could be the non-existent place, yeah? So this sheds some light on the way in which um, classical peoples and people in history have potentially thought of utopias. They've potentially thought of them as places which are, the, which are, which are great, which are good, however, places which don't exist inherently. Um, you could even say that the, 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 the utopia, uh, if we were to have reached a utopia, the concept of a utopia would then sort of um, ev evaporate and, 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 and destroy and it would disintegrate. You would not have a utopia because you're essentially living in one and hence why you can probably never approach it concretely. You can probably never ever reach a utopia um, in any way. There is always something in a society which is gonna, which is, which is able to be uh, refined, which is able to be improved and bettered. So going uh, into the book itself a little bit or the novel itself a little bit, um, I don't want to go too much into the actual theme and the plot. However, in general, uh, a group of explorers stumble upon an island which, which they were not anticipating. Uh, they they essentially shipwrecked in a certain way. Um, they encounter this group of people who who they had no idea existed. They they um, were, were were not were not prepared for this. Their maps didn't show this island, and then then. Uh, the uh, these explorers are then approached by the inhabitants of this island and of course the explorers are in, in, naturally scared and hesitant and worried that they may get killed and whatnot so every, this, at, the, at the start there's a bit of tension and whatnot um, uh, you know on the other side as well the inhabitants uh, inhabitants of this island are also skeptical about who these people are you know what are they doing here uh, what are their intentions are they come to conquer us are they come to destroy us are they come to help us do they even know who we are um, these are all the the, the, the the things which are flowing through the inhabitants' minds. Uh, these these are all the things which they're doubtful about. And of course, uh, so, the, so then later on, you know, as the plot develops, the the the, the explorers are seen to be uh, inert and they they they're peaceful. They're not coming to conquer. And then the inhabitants realize this, so they give them shelter on the island and they put them in a sort of hotel of sorts. Um, as as you, as you can as you can imagine. You know, stumbling across a foreign island, being taken onto this island, and then and then put in a hotel, you would be quite um, skeptical. You would have many many questions. You know, what am I doing here? Who are these people? You'd be very curious. Okay, and and uh, of course these these explorers as well were curious. Um, so they, they were begging the question: Who are you guys? What are you doing here? Um, how uh, how did you get here? You know, who are you essentially? Because the, the explorers had no idea who these people were. They're, they're not on the map. They're essentially a mystery. However, they, they appear quite developed and, and, and sophisticated. Yeah, So they, everyone is sort of confused and they're eager to hear what's, what's actually going on in this island. Um, the inhabitants of the island as well are, are skeptical about the explorers. They, before they tell them about their, themselves and their history and, and, and the workings of their culture and their society, they first want to know whether these people you know, are capable of of um of, of sinister actions you know are, are, are they are their intentions pure you know are they just going to uh, uh destroy us and conquer us if we give them the chance right so the inhabitants are skeptical and once this skepticism is 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 neutralized and is addressed um the the inhabitants go on to explain uh, how they came to be who they are you know, and, it, and it turns out that the inhabitants are quite an ancient people a, a people that have been around for a long time. They've navigated. They've navigated the world for for quite a time. They they know about the history. They have uh, rich archives, rich libraries. They have a rich knowledge of the world, the, the trade routes, and and they've existed for a very long period of time. They've existed longer than all the other societies and all the other civilizations that have that have that have uh, existed alongside them. While while the others have crumbled, they've maintained 
um, their existence and their presence, you know, and, and their stability. Uh, so um, the inhabitants, they, 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 they keep, they, they begin explaining, you know, how they've been able, how, the, how they've been able to reach such sophistication, such development peacefully, you know, and how they've been able to sustain their culture while others have perished. Um, and, and uh, what Bacon is, is hinting at now is then uh, the, the sort of the prerequisites for a stable culture. He's sort of hinting and he's alluding to the fact that uh, for a culture to exist for a long period of time, there must be certain elements in that culture, in that society, which keep it afloat, which keep it, uh, which keep it existing, which keep it from self-destructing, cannibalizing. So he begins by um, uh, pointing out that they have a very rich uh, spiritual uh, component in, the, in, the, in, the, in their society. They um, are highly developed moral individuals. You know, their morality is, is put on the top of the pedestal. You know, not fame, not riches, but morality, the purity of one's soul, right? The, 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 the sort of uh, nurturing of one's soul and spirit and morality and the uh, and ethics are given a, a fundamental uh, sort of um, uh, supremacy in their society. Uh, this is what uh, Bacon is saying. He's saying that in order for us to develop technolo technologically and, and subsist and exist and, and, and ma maintain and propagate our culture uh, for long periods of time, in order to exist within a utopia, what you need is a, is a society which has citizens that are um, developed spiritually, that, that, that are developed morally, which, which hold morality in the highest regard. Uh, uh, this is what he's saying. He's saying that the, the, the leaders of the culture have to be even even stronger uh, um, individuals with even more even purer moral uh, inclinations. This is what he's explicitly saying. Um, so as 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 the spiritual component of the society, as the moral component of the society is being explained, um, they take the explorers they take this these, these new foreigners and they and they show them around the island they t they take them underground they take them to these caves where uh they he, he's he's now projecting and he's now showing everybody uh their technological advancement their technological developments uh he's he's uh showing how they've developed themselves um, 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 scientifically, yeah. So they've got all these medicines and they've got all these development tools. Their industry is well developed. Uh, their scientific disciplines are well dis developed. They have a great understanding of biology and chemistry and physics. And 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 then Bacon goes on to just list on and on and on and on and on their achievements. Uh, one striking thing, one one thing which is so 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 clear here is the fact that in the 1600s, Bacon seems to have seems to have. Um, predicted of many of the things which we have today, you know, many of the scientific sk skills and tools which we use today, he seemed to have predicted them, you know, things such as vaccination and whatnot, things such as agriculture and, and plant uh, uh, cloning and grafting, he seems to have predicted them, which is quite a feat, you know, if you can imagine yourself trying to predict something 500 years from now, you're not going to have much, 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 uh, much success, I think it's quite a difficult thing, so he seems to, he seems to have forecasted and predicted many of our, of our current achievements um, in the 1600s, right? So he, he's showing that they're, they're, they're in this utopia, they have a highly developed technological base, their industry is highly developed, their, their scientific disciplines are highly developed and, and sophisticated and, and refined. However, what, he's, what Bacon is saying explicitly is that in order for us to achieve this technological advancement and this sophistication, in order to reach these great heights in industry and in science, um, the prerequisites for this are a highly developed morality, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a refined spirituality. And the individuals in the society, the citizens in the society, the polity, uh, all of them must be um, highly developed moral individuals, okay? They must hold morality in the highest light, you know, they have to, they must hold spirituality in the highest light. If this is not present, then we cannot have this technological advancement. This is this is what he's saying. So, it's quite interesting, right? Because reflections on utopias all throughout all throughout history, you know, they seem to come across similar themes. They're saying that the, the first we need a we need a morality. We need we need to be good people before we can be great um, technologists, great scientists, and great explorers. We need to be good people. 
because if we're not good people, then our society is just going to crumble. It's going to it cannibalize. It's going to destroy itself from the inside out. And it's going to make bad decisions. So what's so important is the, is the spiritual life. It's the moral life. Um, it's not necessarily the religious life. You know, you don't have these institutionalized systems such as religion. Yeah. This is what Bacon is saying. Um, <clears throat> so if you're going to now contrast this with our current day, you know, in one aspect, you can say we've reached Bacon's utopia technologically in industry because we have, we've actually uh, 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 superseded it. Yeah, we've, 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 we've eclipsed it. We, we have all the things which Bacon talks about. We have many of the industrial tools, many of the scientific tools which he talks about. However, what we don't have is this highly developed moral life. Okay, and this is what humbles me in a certain way in this book is that we have all of the descriptions, you know, of Bacon. We have all of the utopian technologies available to, available to us today. We're living in his utopia and to a certain extent. That is what humbles me. We're living in his utopia. You know, he, he theorized the best possible world in a certain way or or he, he talked about a beautiful world and, and we sort of live in it in a certain way. You know, health care and medicine and and access to food and resources are, are, are quite common all across the world, even in the, in, the, in the most poorly developed regions across the world. People still have a certain level of um, uh, sort of freedom and, 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 and access to resources. Although we have a far, far way to go. You know, the West is, is very, very developed, however, certain parts of the world are not so much, and we have a far, far way to go. Where we have furthest to go is the individual moral uh, 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 condition. That's where we have the furthest to go, I think. You know, while we, we may be developed technologically, according to Bacon, if we do not have a paralleled moral development, if we, if we don't develop our spirituality, our beliefs, you know, our personhood and our humanity in, 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 in uh, coordination with our technological development, then it's not going to be a utopia in a certain way. This is what he's saying. This is exactly what he's saying. Um, he, he alludes to certain, I think, Christian ideas of gods and whatnot because this is the time period that he's from, so you can't escape that. Um, uh, the book is also written in a, uh, in, a, in a style in which it may be difficult for people who, uh, who, who, who are used to reading books published in the last hundred years, you know, written in the last hundred years. If, if you're used to reading contemporary books, um, contemporary English, you may have a hard time approaching this book. Yes, yeah, so the first uh, 15, 10 pages may be difficult for you. However, don't give up, of course, you know what I mean? Uh, this is not a, a, a reason to actually be distracted or, or put down. Um, just may take, just take your time, go, go approach it a little bit slower. Um, don't um, rush things, you know, the language may be a little bit difficult. However, at the end of the day, it's still English. Yeah, it's still English. It's not a reason to just uh, quit and just quit reading the book because because the English seems a little bit antiquated. Not at all. Just take your time. Be slow. It's worth the, it's worth the read. It's definitely worth the idea and the ideas you're going to get from the book. Um, who the book is for? I think the book is best suited to people who are interested in ideas, the development of ideas, people who are, of course, interested in utopias and the way that utopias have been portrayed throughout society, throughout history. I think that's who this book is best for. Um, uh, aside from that, you know, if, if you're interested in more f books related to fantasy in a certain way, even though this is a fan sort of fantastic book, yeah, it's it's not a book which is mythological in a certain way or, or related to things things in that nature. Yeah, uh, it's a book with a very specific audience, people who are interested in utopias and, 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 and idealized versions of society. Also, people who are interested in history to a certain extent. Um, so, Francis Bacon's uh, New Atlantis. I hope I didn't explain too much of the book. I hope there's still some parts which are which are unknown. However, um, but yeah, I hope I didn't go into too much detail. I hope there's still parts of the book <laughs> which are which are unknown. Um, I hope I didn't spoil the plot too much. Uh, Francis Bacon's Utopia. A um, bit of a difficult read. The English is a bit antiquated, a bit older than, than what we're used to. However, it's still, still not, uh, you know, impenetrable, of course. You know, you've, you've got to go and read it yourself if you're interested in it. Um, yeah.